So, hello, we're doing an interview today with Paul Lucas from SES Law. Um, SES Law handle all our, if you want to use them for doing your evictions, then they do a, a discounted service for us. So more about that later. But Paul, welcome. Welcome one and all. Hello, Peter. How are you? All right. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, in this lockdown time, so it's all a bit peculiar. Yes. Uh, I think what members are interested in, they're slightly confused with this. They're being told, oh, they can't evict anybody. They can't do anything. Um, the government has seemed to have given the opinion to, to tenants that they can stop paying rent and nothing can be done about it. And that's, I don't think that's true. So what do you think's changed? Okay, so just to talk about what's um, been brought in by the government. Uh, first and foremost, we have the Corona Act 2020. Uh, that came into force on the 25th of March. Um, most importantly for landlords, it extends the notice period uh, in Section 8 and 21 notices uh, to three months. Um, that doesn't affect notices which have been issued before that date, so before the 25th of March. Um, with that in mind, there's a new Form 6A for Section 21s and there's a new Form 3 for Section 8s. And that must be used, or they must be used, until the 30th of September of this year. Um, it's also important to note that although there's been an extension on the notice period, uh, the time limits for the Section 21 notice is still six months. Okay, um, can I just explain that to, to people who are a bit confused with that. So basically what we're saying is from uh, when the notice is served, so when it's in the tenant's hot sticky little hand, the landlord must do something with it within six months or lose it. That, that's right, and although, although the period's been moved from two to three months, the uh, limitation hasn't been moved from six to seven. So it's just that shorter period to take action. Yeah. So it's, everything's now a straightforward three month notice. That's right, yes. Um, now, in hand with that, the um, courts have introduced a practice direction, uh, 51 said, uh, which has presently stayed all possession proceedings uh, for a period of three months. Uh, from the 27th of March so that takes you to around about the 25th of June right um although that, that's subject to review it could be extended again yeah um, and then finally the county court bailiff have been told not to set any eviction dates due to um, social distancing requirements um, and the high court enforcement officers have uh, followed suit as well so basically, oh, you've got some, got some assistance there, I see. So. Yes, I think so. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, I'm a landlord, my tenant stops paying, um, what should I do? Well, none of um, the changes prevent you from issuing a notice, um, and it doesn't uh, prevent you from issuing the claim. Will be, of course, with the notice, you have the three months to wait, um, and with the claim, although it would be issued, it wouldn't uh, move any way uh, forward um, until the stay was lifted. Um, at the moment, the government's wish or the guidance is really to um, avoid having to send a notice or issue a claim um, and do your best to try to um, speak to your uh, tenants uh, and try to negotiate uh, some sort of arrangement until this period comes to an end. But I think the main um, is, is not to ignore it, is to, is to communicate. That, that's right. It's, uh, communication is key. Um, yeah. And that's really the message that's being driven by the government. There's been a few measures which, which uh, they uh, hope will help. You've got uh, mortgage uh, repayment holidays, which have now been extended to buy-to-let mortgages, although that does mean um, the mortgage will still be due at the end of those periods and the interest will accrue. Um, but we're also told that uh, local authorities have been given quite a substantial amount of money to allow for final hard financial hardship applications from um, tenants yeah. um, who are unable to pay rent because uh, there's very much a focus on keeping people in their properties. Yeah, but if you get a, a tenant who you, you know and you can prove are definitely still getting an income from some or another they're just trying it on what would you recommend um uh, again keep records any sort of evidence of that that's important when you ultimately do get to court 
Um, whether or not that's something you can report to local authority, I'd have to, um, uh, that's something I'd have to come back to you on. Um, but but really, yes, I think the main point is just to keep that record. Yeah. Uh, as, a, uh, as a very, um, there, there is the option to apply for something called injunctive relief, to apply for an injunction uh, for a tenant to leave a property if, for example, they haven't complied with a notice. Um, so quite similar to your grounds for possession, although you're applying for an injunction. The difficulty is you're off to the high court generally. Uh, it's more costly and it's also a discretionary remedy. And I expect that uh, the judge is going to continue to toe the line, which is to um, help people stay in their properties. So really, as, as much as there will be some chances, as you say, during this time, best thing to do is just to keep evidence of everything so you can present that when the time comes. Because what we've been saying to our members is uh, if a tenant says to a landlord, uh, I've got no money because of coronavirus, that on its own is unacceptable. We're saying that uh, the, the tenant has um, a contractual obligation to continue paying the rent and a moral obligation to try and mitigate their circumstances. And then really it's up to the, uh, the landlord and the tenant to, to negotiate the situation. If they find that, um, that the tenant's been put on to 80% of their pay, they could negotiate a, a rep reduction for a short period of time. If they find that they're, um, they're waiting for payment, as seems to be the case, then they could indeed uh, agree a rent holiday, not waive it, a rent holiday. So they say, fine, we'll wait a couple of months, but over the next year, we need to make good that, that two months. Is that what you would follow as well? That, that, that's completely right. That would be my advice to you, Peter. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the main thing, as you say, we keep on at people, keep records. When I train landlords, I always say to them from the outset, you must keep a paper trail. 98% of the time, you will not need that paper trail. But when you need it, you need it. So you'll be glad you'll be glad you have it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly <laughs> that. So, um, OK, so how long do you think it's got likely to stay like this in? But it, Where's your magic ball? Where's your crystal ball? Sir? Well, <laughs> well, at the moment, the, um, there are provisional, well, there are dates within uh, relevant bits of law and rule. Um, the Corona Act uh, ceases to have effect at the end of September. Um, and of course, the practice direction only stays cases until June. And that itself um, ends in October or ceases to have effect. But again, all of that's subject to review, so it's really dependent on how long this situation goes on for. Um, interestingly though, um, as you can imagine, um, there's been a challenge already, um, and there's a Court of Appeal case called Arkin and Marshall, which is due to be heard on the uh, 30th of April, so in two days' time. And that case challenges uh, the lawfulness of the practice direction. Um, and also, interestingly, whether, um, something which isn't touched on in the practice direction, whether that stay applies to case management direction. So let's say we've issued a claim, but we don't have a trial for a number of months time. Does that mean the parties don't have to comply with the directions in the meantime or not? Um, so that's going to be clarified um, by the court, hopefully. Yeah. So um, watch this space over the next couple of days. Yeah, well, certainly uh, we can get back together again after we've had that court of appeal. Uh, we happen to know one of the barristers dealing with that, so I'm sure we could we could get him in on a three-way conversation to discuss. Yeah, it. that sounds sounds interesting. But of course, the, the trouble will be is that sometimes the law takes a long time to act. It could well be <laughs> by the time that the court of appeal rules that the injunctions are taken away anyway. So yeah, life changes. We hope. That that's so, right. Yeah. All right. So. Um, Anything else we want to say on this before we move on? Um, only last point is um, there is uh, there is discussion about extending the current pre-action protocol, uh, which applies to social landlords, um, over to private landlords as well. Um, as far as I'm aware, that's still just discussion. It's all a bit up in the air. Uh, I imagine the government's going to review uh, the current measures and how effective they've been for what the goal is. Um, and then they'll take it from there. I mean, the, the, the main point about the pre-action protocol is to try, as you said earlier on, to try and stop cases going to court unnecessarily. But it's very much down to uh, the landlord contacting their tenants to say, what are the problems? 
discussing negotiating the situation as you, as you keep saying quite rightfully so keeping records of those conversations and then the, the absolute final thing is right i'm going to have to go to court that, that's right and what and what we find across the board with all sorts of protocols is that so long as the judge can see you've acted within the spirit of it so you've done your best to try to resolve um a judge isn't going to come down particularly hard on you either way yeah and then the final thing is um we've, we've been talking about evictions what if uh, eviction or not your own money so what's the best way of taking that forward well um there's always the option to bring a separate money claim um you're not prevented from bringing those at the moment in the county courts the problem of course is that a money claim is for a fixed amount and the sort of debts landlords are dealing with are, are increasing so it's not something I'd necessarily uh, advise, uh, but it is an option. Uh, and of course, the money claims in any events are still being, uh, are still facing delay because of the current circumstances as yeah. well. So you might be met with, with similar problems in terms of at least the administration side. Okay. Um, again, repeating what you said, communication is key. Um, but really, I think give thought to issuing notices now if you need to um, or if you're able to issuing the claim because although the notice won't expire for three months and the claim won't move any forward at this point mm. at least you're going to be at the front of that queue when those stays are lifted um, and everyone tries to get in at that point what if i were to do a section 21 today and the courts can't hear it till after six months because of the, the queues will, will that section 21 continue or we'll have to do a new one uh, at the moment you'd have to do a new one although you, well well no sorry i beg your pardon provided you've issued within that six month period that would stop the uh, limitation clock as it were okay all right okay so <laughs> all right i think as everybody knows we're in a, a time where we're sort of making it up as we go along but uh the main thing is to all landlords keep an eye on your your rental situation don't let it get out of control this is always the situation ne discuss with your tenants negotiate with your tenants keep a record and as the final act if you really have to then don't be frightened to issue a section 21 or section 8 and paul you can help with that can't you so if oh, we can indeed yes yeah so if you if you want to use that situation then um email us at notices at ihouse.uk and then we can pass that on to Paul and deal with from there. So Paul, thank you very much. I'm sure we'll be doing this again. As you say, we've got the um uh the Court of Appeal coming up. So uh you know we'll have a chat after that. So thank you very much. Yes, look forward to it. Thank you, Peter.